Hey guys, Major Kid here, and season 2 has been dubbed the beginning of the end. So mark your calendar, boys, because for dance as we know it, it's coming to an end. Stories can't be related complicated, and just like anything that has to do with time travel and multiple dimensions, a total clusterfuck. So here is the story so far. Since the launch of Black Ops Cold War, Treyarch has tried its hardest not only to merge the Modern Warfare and the Black Ops universes together, but to also merge zombies. And as it turns out, the new zombies narrative is no longer an alternative reality, but a parallel universe. In one of the title updates, and I have no idea which one, there was a ship spotted off the edge of Rebirth Island, and it's now headed to Verdansk. In Verdansk, people have been experiencing this interference with the comms, leading up to the Season 2 update, which is coming from the ship. Have a listen. And for those of you who don't speak Russian, don't worry, your boy got you. The transmission reads, Captain Rosenthal speaking, Russian ship Vodianoi. We were transporting strange biological material. What have we done? There was an infection outbreak, and I'm afraid we won't be able to contain it. The message ends with everybody on board screaming, and there's obviously a clear struggle. So, what happened? Something that Treyarch made a point of with Black Ops Cold War was to unite all universes. And with the ship having left Rebirth Island and crashing just off the shore of the southeast side of the map, their efforts to merge said universes seem to be complete. But that's not the end of the story. For those of you who completed the intel missions and have followed the storyline in Warzone, this is more than just a way to keep pushing out games. The narrative has some significant depth behind it, and to understand it, we have to start at the beginning. Well, we actually need to start at the end of Modern Warfare's campaign. We see Captain Price recruiting the majority of Task Force 141 and name dropping a couple people, as well as a temporary partnership between the FSB and the CIA to go against one common threat, Khalid al-Assad. As two factions unite to fight against a common evil to stop World War III, a temporary truce was reached between the Coalition and the Allegiance. However, the intel mission details on how the truce didn't last very long. And if we take a look at the first season of Modern Warfare, we can see two completely new operators fighting each other and Khalid al-Assad watching the whole thing from broadcast all the way back in Berdansk. As he says, not to worry about the shipment of gas, that they have plenty more. This didn't make any sense as Warzone was not released yet, but if we jump to Season 2, we can see Ghost finally joining the fight and spearheading the introduction of Task Force 141 into Verdansk, when he then says this. Price, something's wrong in Verdansk. They're targeting their own. We need to find out why. Send fighters I can trust. Ghost out. Further pushing the narrative that this unstable choose has pretty much already fallen, and this is before the launch of Warzone. He then tells Captain Price to send soldiers he can trust, and in response, we see Alex being added in Season 3 to find out why the armistice has fallen. When we jump to Season 4, the cutting is not really part of the narrative, but more of a set rep of what's happening in Verdansk. We see the introduction of Gas and Captain Price into the growing ranks of Task Force 141, yet we do get to see something here that we have not seen before. It is finally revealed that Khalid al-Assad wasn't working alone, but with a co-conspirator, Viktor Sakaev, following in the footsteps of his father, Imran Sakaev, with the son being revealed as the sole conspirator behind the armistice falling, and if you want the TLDR on how he did it, paying operators. Money. That's literally it. That's how he did it. All those intel missions. Money. But now let's jump to season 5, and we see the introduction of Shadow Company. But this is where the intel missions become crucial, because there are two separate stories with this mission. One follows on 3 one aka Woods, escaping from the Gulag decades ago. And the second talks about how Viktor Sakaev, the father of Imran Sakaev, and how he spent his time in the Gulag. This is where he's introduced to a Cold War Russian terrorist, known as Perseus. And just like that, both Perseus and Adler are introduced into the narrative at the beginning of Season 5, which is absolutely nuts. Because obviously, you know, in retrospects, Season 5 dropped 3 months prior to the Cold War release. But now let's jump into Cold War for a second, when we see Imran Sakaev and how he's tying both storylines together, as is seen here in the Russian Embassy as part of the Black Ops Cold War campaign. The committee wants someone from the first chief directorate to oversee Colonel Kravchenko's investigation. If you've not met him already, this is Imran Zakaev. Moving back to the future, the final season of Modern Warfare is actually rather unimportant. Farah and Nikolai are added as the final members of Task Force 141, and then the train tunnels are activated, further explaining how Viktor Sakaev and Khalid al-Assad use the tunnels to move undetected. However, if you complete all the intel missions, you will get this cutscene right here. Bravo 6 degrees. Go green. Copy actual. Demon teams have cordoned off the silo. Guys, report. 
Of the Tower of Ghost. We act to Kyiv's comms. He's up. Stand by. Our victory today will be decisive. Together, we put a knife to the neck of history. It's time now for the final cut. All stations be advised. Zakayev's light in the fuse. We don't have much time. Farah, where are you? At the entry with Alex, creating a diversion. Guards are coming our way now, actual. Keep them busy. They came to Verdansk to stop us, but they couldn't resist fighting each other. This war is 50 years in the making. No more treaties, no more diplomacy. These weapons will no longer lie dormant. Your work is not in vain, father. Show yourself! <laughs> You're wasting your time. <laughs> Victor. Captain Price. I am not surprised. You're a dead man, Zakayev. <clears throat> I started a war. Killing me won't stop it. Oh, I will kill you. But the fool will wait. <clears throat> All stations. Zakayev is dead, but the missile is hot. Nick, I need the cogs now. Copy. Here's the count Six. Six. One. One. Five. Five. Say again. Nick. Say again. I've lost you, Nick. Bloody hell, Nick. I lost it. Yeah. Seven. Seven. Six. One. Five. Seven. What call sign is this net? Rose is terminated. Mission accomplished. So, what's your position? Half a click off the coast. Things are really heating up out here. Hold tight. We're moving your way. On me. This cutscene is the most important one because it serves multiple purposes. First, it wraps up the entire Modern Warfare storyline as far as Warzone goes. Second, it's a cliffhanger looming to what would be Modern Warfare Roman numeral 2 to avoid any more marketing confusion. Third, it introduces one of the most anticipated characters with Task Force 141 that being so, but the most crucial part of this cutscene is that it removes the six most important characters from Berdansk, Price, Gas, Ghost, Alex, Farah, and Nikolai as they have exited Verdansk and are now converging on Sol's position to do whatever their next mission is. And if we take a little break here and segue, when we saw the map being added to Season 1 was Rebirth Island, I was honestly pissed. I was actually tired of playing Alcatraz the year before, but now we can tell that Rebirth Island is just the ignition of what is to come with Warzone. It serves as the birthplace of Nova 6, but there's also experiments being conducted, most of them unethical. We now know that the ship that was spotted off the shore of Rebirth Island is now carrying Ethereum crystals that have caused the crew members to become infected and crash on the shores of Verdansk, and zombies have pretty much been released into Warzone. But if we recall the last cutscene from Modern Warfare, even though Price stops Akayev, the nukes are still there, and armed, and pretty much ready to go. And with Cold War Season 2 being dubbed the beginning of the end, it's pretty self-explanatory from here. The zombies will keep infecting people across Verdansk, and the nukes will be set off to level the map and contain the outbreak. As for the next map, there are two possible theories. First one comes from this picture that has been data mined, which shows the actual nuke blast zone. If a nuke was set off in a city like this, it's pretty realistic. But essentially, it terraforms Berdansk into a post-nuclear landfill for us to fight on. The next theory is that the Ethereum crystals will form an anomaly, and as the nukes come crashing down, our operators will exit Verdansk through those portals, 
and land on a completely new Warzone map, the Euro Mountains, in the 1980s. This map will consist of the Fireteam Dirty Bomb maps being stitched together, that being Ruka, Sanatorium, Alpine, and Galova. But just because our operators are transported through space and time doesn't mean they'll be able to come back. Therefore, that is the importance of Task Force 141 exiting Verdansk all the way back in Season 6, leaving it open for a Modern Warfare sequel and the reintroduction of either a post-apocalyptic Verdansk or a modern-day Euro Mountains. And all this information is amazing, but when is the nuke event actually going to happen? As of right now, all signs are pointing to March 11th, being the big boom day, to complete the one year anniversary for Warzone and to introduce a new setting like what we see every year in Call of Duty. So mark your calendars because March 11th, for dance, it's going kaboom. And that's all I have for you today, a detailed breakdown and backstory as what is to come with the nuke event in Warzone. As for me, I honestly thought that the Cold War story being merged with the Modern Warfare story was grasping for straws until I actually compiled this information together. But now, it's time for me to hear from you guys. Did you know how hard the developers work to merge the universe together? Or is this all news to you? And also, if you could pick the next Warzone map, what would it be? A post-apocalyptic Verdansk or an 80s themed Euro Mountains? Let me know down in the comment section below. If you found this video interesting, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell notification icon. That way you get notified when my videos go live. As always, a like reading is always appreciated. Also, follow me over on Twitch. And that's all for me today. I'm Major Cade, and I thank you for watching. Thank <laughs> you.